accept you, oh God, but you was there all the time. Lord oh God, we thank you on the day of oh God. God. And we be so careful to give your name the praise. We be so careful to give your name the praise. We be so careful to give your name the praise. We be so careful to give your name the praise. Oh God, we thank you today, oh God. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do, oh God. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do, oh God. Because you gave us the power, oh God. Oh God, and from this day forth, we're going to use that Holy Ghost power, oh God. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, we love you on today. We love you on today. We're going to set this atmosphere, oh God. Oh, it's all going to be conducive for preaching, oh God. Because the word, your word will last always, oh God. And oh God, we ask you to bless that word one more time, oh God. Because somebody's crying out on today, oh God. Somebody needs that living water, oh God. You are the living water, oh God. You are the living water, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for that living water. Oh God, we thank you for that living water, oh God. As you say, we be thirsty, we'll thirst never again, oh God. If we drink of that living water of you, oh God. Oh God, we thank you on today, oh God. We thank you for this service that's getting ready to take place. Lord, we ask you to bless this afternoon service, oh God. Oh God, have your way, oh God. Lord, God, have your way through the praise and the worship, oh God. Oh God, we thank you on today, oh God. We thank you for that word, oh God. And I'm respecting the word, oh God. Oh God, I'm respecting the word, oh God. Lord, God, move by your power this morning, oh God. Have your way, oh God, like never before, oh God. Oh God, we thank you on today. Oh God, we praise you on today. Ain't nobody mad but the devil on today. Oh God, we thank you, we honor you. We magnify your holy and righteous name. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name, oh God. We bless your holy name, oh God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name for those souls that's getting ready to come, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy's mad on this morning because their souls coming unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I decree and declare. Let the praise and worship be like never before, oh God. Let us cry out to you, oh God, this morning, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you on today. It's just a tugging on my spirit that I can't let this break up. But Lord, I thank you on today, oh God. Move by your power, oh God. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. We bless your name, oh God. We bless your holy and righteous name, oh God. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Jehovah Rapha, oh God. Your name is Jehovah Nisi, oh God. So Lord, I'm asking you to do move by your power. And I'm afraid free this in Jesus' name. Those that believe it, come on and clap your hands and come alive and give you God a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. I'm not trying to rush because God's been too good to me. Hallelujah, God. Glory to your name. At 
this time we're going to have Minister Richardson give us the scripture on this morning. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. Turn with me to Philippians. I'll be reading verse verse 4. Philippians 4 and 4. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And the scripture reads Philippians 4 and 4. Rejoice. 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 In the Lord. Can I read it like I feel it? Rejoice. In the Lord. And always, and again, I say, rejoice. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Clap your blessed hands and give God's name glory. Now we will turn this power service over to the hands of our praise team. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, stand to your feet and bless God the best way that you know how. Amen. Come on, shake somebody's hand and say it's good to see you in the house one more time. Right where you are, you don't have to move too far if you don't want to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Certainly it's good to be in the house one more time. And we serve a great God that has allowed us to see a great day such as today. Amen.
Peace 
push your pump, let me hear you make some Holy Ghost noise in this place. Hallelujah. He's merciful. Hallelujah. 
He's gracious to us, hallelujah. And he's favorable to us, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to give him praise, hallelujah. Thank you. 
you in the name of our Lord Savior. Jesus Christ, on this Sunday morning, we thank God for your presence. So the Lord's verses that we have not been consumed with is this compassion for the fact. And I thank and I praise God for waking me. Not because of what I did last night. But he blessed me to wake up this morning. I honor him. I honor him. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And the devil is upset because he woke me up. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you just upset the devil when you walked in the door this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah up in here. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of being stuck. I'm tired of being stuck. from the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Wing as eagles. They shall run 
and not be weary. Not be weary. They should walk, walk. not faint. faint. Clap your hand. Yeah. Tell the Lord thank you. Gracious Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you, God, for those that repeated your word, your anointed word. Use me to your glory to that will. I say yes to your will, yes to your words. Forgive me for every harmful thought that I may have crossed my mind. Forgive me, Lord, for every evil thing that I may have thought of. But I come to be a servant of you tonight. A servant this morning, Lord, to your people. Use me to your glory to your will. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. That I feed your people. That they are able to receive it with clarity and understanding. And let them know that you love them. That's why you saved them. That's why you sent your son Jesus to the cross. That the sin that we suffer. That we may have grace and mercy and forgiveness. For you love the world more. And I'm so glad that I was a part of it. Thank you. For sharing your grace and your mercy this morning. Bless those that stand in under the sound of my voice as you speak. To whatever they have need of, stretch out thy fall, stretch out their arms, and bless them. Bless them right now. Bless them. Let them look towards the hills from what's coming to hell. And when they think about all the goodness that you have done, let them open their mouth and give you praise. Let them open their mouth and give you praise. It could have been the other way, but God, you bless them. Oh, shout hallelujah up in here. All these things we commit unto you because you're so wonderful. You're lovable. And we love you for it. And we worship you. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. The humble shall hear the other be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I believe if we need just get three people just to exalt the name of God right now. Whatever you have need in, God is going to step in. He's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. He's going to bless you, but you got to open your mouth. You got to tell the Lord thank you. God, I thank you for the good things and the bad things. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hand, give God some praise. And this morning, I would just like to use for the title, subject, topic, whatever you want to call it. I'm tired of being stuck. I don't know about you. There are places, times of my life, I want some freedom. I'm tired of doing what everybody else wants me to do. It feels like I can do what everybody else wants me to do. But when God calls me to do something, I'll struggle with it. Amen. Mm. I'm tired of being a people pleaser. Yeah. I'm tired of doing things that's going to please you and not please God. Yeah. I'm stuck. Yeah. I don't know how to come out. But it reminds me of John. Yeah. In my third day, I had to come out. Uh-huh. Spit me up out of the belly mm. and put me on the shore. Yeah. And I promise you, Lord, never that that they don't like it. I got to preach it anyhow. Or somebody shout hallelujah. There are different kinds of falls. There are some falls in your life that's painful. A fall sometimes could be as bad as you're falling from a high place to a low place. And you break your leg and you can't get up by yourself and you need somebody to help you. You ever been in a place where you thought that everybody turned their back on you? And it seemed like nobody cares but you ever been to that place and so when we get to that place of brokenness somebody shout hallelujah we will depend on everything else to make us feel better 
We think the woman is going to make us feel better. We think cocaine is going to make us feel better. We think the hen dog is going to make us feel better. We, whatever it is that will change our mood, we think it's going to make us feel better. But what actually happens is, is we get stuck. We get stuck and we don't know how to come out. But the Bible says, but they that wait. <laughs> it seems like I've been waiting a long time. Yeah. And it seems like the longer I wait, the worse it gets. Well, somebody shout how to be up in here. But I have to learn how to praise God in the midst of me being stuck. In the book of John, chapter number 11, we find Lazarus, the friend of Jesus, who had died. And, and, and there was the sister of Martha and Mary blamed Jesus. And if you hadn't been here, that this wouldn't have happened. But, but God had a plan. Somebody say, wherever you at right now, God has a plan for you to come out. You don't have a plan. Oh God, thank you. We may not understand the dynamics of the, what we are going through, but God has a plan. Yeah, I remember when I used to park my car up on 19th Independence Avenue. That was my car dominium. I didn't know that God had a plan. Oh, I understood that I'm sleeping in my car because I'm homeless. Shout hallelujah in here. Hallelujah. But I didn't know that God's plan was for me to be here where I'm at today. See, because in broken places and when you're broken, you can't see the outcome. All you feel is the hurt that you're going through while you're going through it. You feel like that nobody cares about you got family all over the world and won't nobody give you a dime. Feels like you ever, you ever had family members uh, that, that they got friends that will go to jail and, and they come home and they give them a big piece of money uh, and you right here and they can't even give you a dime. Uh, oh, child, I'll leave you up in here. But uh, well, I come to give God some praise this morning. Uh, oh, shout hallelujah. Uh, sometimes I still get stuck every now and then. Uh, but I'm not going to praise my way out. Uh, oh, shout hallelujah. Don't you know that men are the greatest praisers if they can ever muster up a praise on the inside uh, and tell the Lord, say, God, uh, for God I live and for God I will die. Uh, I praise your name uh, with lifting up her. Hand. Shout hallelujah. Men were called to be praisers. We are the image of God. And God loved the praises. But the Bible says in the 22nd chapter of the book of Psalms that he had us the praises of his people. And I got anybody up in here can cut their hand and tell God thank you. Shout hallelujah. Don't you know your praise will change? your life. It will bring you out of a stuck place. All you got to do is open your mouth and give God some praise. Hallelujah up in here. In the book of Acts. In chapter number 16. And the Bible says at midnight that Paul and Silas they were locked up in a dungeon. And their hands was tied down. Huh? They didn't have the freedom huh? to clap their hand and give God some praise. Huh? Their feet was bound. Huh? They couldn't get the stomping door huh? because it was bound. Huh? But what they did do, they did tie their mouth up. Huh? But the Bible said huh? that at midnight, huh? that poor the savage was stuck in a dungeon. How many of you are stuck right there? Shout hallelujah up in here. And the Bible said that when they begin to start singing praises unto God, that an earthquake took place, that it shook the whole jail, and everybody that was in handcuffs, they was loose. Everything began to start walking around. But the people that was there, the warden, that sit back and they look at a great thing that happened. How can all these people can't could fall off at the same time? God is a miracle worker. God can do anything. 
anything he wants to do, when he wants to do it, when you call on him. I hear God say, you ain't calling me enough. And the time you do call me, I can't even hear you. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Hear me, Lord. Here's my plea to you. Oh, shout, hallelujah, I've been here. Oh, God. Pain can be a motivator. Pain will make you do things ha, that you've been too lazy to do. Ha, you've been procrastinating for so long. Ha. God been telling you to get away from that spot that you've been going to, ha, but you're still procrastinating. Ha. See, what happens is ha, when you stuck on high fields, ha, shout hallelujah, ha, the pain hadn't become to be great yet. Ha. Oh, I remember ha, that there was a time ha, that I was up in Lincoln Heights ha, and I smoked by the eight ball ha, and a cocaine heart attack. Ha, but you would think that the heart attack ha, after they told me they never seen nobody survive a cocaine heart attack ha, because it freezes your heart. Ha, you would think ha, that the pain would have cost me ha, not to go back. Ha, I wasn't enough pain yet. Ha, I went back anyway. Ha, it took me three years ha, after going back. Ha, three years of pain of being stuck. Ha, and I got to the place ha, where I couldn't move. Ha, I couldn't do a thing. Ha, but one day, ha, somebody said, one day, ha, one day, ha, I opened my mouth ha, and I said, Lord, I need your help. Ha, I can't even feel ha, the Holy Ghost on the inside. Ha, but I heard the word of God say, ha, but they that wait ha, upon the Lord. Ha, so somewhere, ha, I got some new strength. Ha, I got strength to get up. Ha, I had strength to go through the sight, Lord. Ha, I had strength to get on methadone. Ha, and look where I'm at right now. Ha, somebody shout hallelujah. Ha, where you at now is not your end. It's not your end. You got to tell yourself, I'm tired of being stuck. If you're in a bad relationship with a woman, you're in a bad relationship with a man, you ain't got to stay stuck. The happiness belongs to you. You got to make your mind. Either I'm going to be happy or I'm going to live miserable. I don't want to be miserable. Don't they call me out of doctors into his father's life to be miserable. I claim happiness today. Shout hallelujah up in here. Even though, even though pain in my body. Yesterday I was here. I had to run out of here. And one of my ministers came out. She said, here, take this. Took it, went home. Took a bath, didn't wake up until this morning. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout. Mm. But I want you to understand. Not one time did I complain. I talked about hiding her. But I know God had a plan for me. And God still got a plan. Because when you stuck, you can't have a plan. If you got a plan, you better get to it. Because that's the only way. Don't you know whatever you have planned your life for, you can't get stuck because you're busy for God. God wants you busy. Somebody said, look to your neighbor and neighbor. I don't know about you, but I need nobody here today. I got to get me some God business. I've got to get me some God's business. Okay. God knows all about the difficulties and the problems of his people. There's nothing that God does not know about us. I don't have to talk about what you're going through. Talk about what you is and what you're not. Because God already knows about you. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you belong to him, he is able to quiet your storm. If you remember the gospel, of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that they were on the boat uh, and somebody shout hallelujah uh, and say boat uh, they was on the boat uh, and uh, there was a storm uh, and the storm began uh, to rock the boat that they were in uh, but they had Jesus uh, in the wrong part of the boat uh, 
now. If you have the Holy Ghost, say, I got him on the inside. But somebody shout hallelujah. If you got Jesus on the inside, he can quiet down your storm. But the Bible said that one of the disciples that they went down to the bottom of the boat and they began to wake Jesus up. And Jesus looked at the storm and he said, Peace, be still. And the storm began to start quiet down. Whatever's going on in your life, God can fix it for you. But you got to open your mouth and tell the Lord what is it that you have need of. But the Bible said, Whatsoever you ask in my name, it shall be given unto you. I'm so glad that I'm a child of God. I'm so glad that every time that I call on his name, he don't come when I want him to come. But whenever he show up, he shows up just in time. Oh, shout hallelujah. I've been here, I've been here. And so now, after the quiet, watch this, after the quiet storm, and when you find yourself in the midst of a storm, instead of sitting and weeping and criticizing God, and sometimes we don't know what else to do, we'll sit down, we'll sit down, and because we got a storm in our life, we don't want to recognize the part that we're playing. So we invite you without your permission, and we'll get around other folks and talk about your storm instead of the storm that you're going through. See, we always got to find somebody to blame. We don't ever want to play the ball that we play in. Ain't none of us innocent up in here. Shout hallelujah up in here. But some of most of us up in here, we stuck somewhere and don't know how to come out. I've been in some places I had no business in. And I thought it was so good up in there. I was stuck and couldn't get out. I was stuck like Chuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can figure out the rest. Shout hallelujah up in here. Instead of sitting and weeping, I ought to be praying to God and saying, God, I know this too shall pay. What is it that I need to learn? I'm the mess I'm going in. What is it that you want me to see about me and not somebody else? Clap your hand, tell God, thank you. We always, every Negro in the world, whenever they're going through something, they always blame somebody. They never take the, the account of the accountability of what they're going through and not say, well, let me look at the part that I play in. Because you don't want to look at self. But the Bible says that every man examines them on here. I'm tired of being stuck because when I don't see me, I can never see me. I will never come out of being stuck because I'm looking at everybody else and I'm blaming everybody else. Oh, I don't like him. You don't even know me and you don't like me. You know why you don't like me? Because I'm too much like you. When you look at me, you look at in the mirror and that's why you don't like we more alike than we are different. Well, somebody shout hallelujah. But I'm so glad that I wasn't stuck. I'm not stuck where I was stuck some years ago. I'm not going to stand up and tell you. I'm not, I'm not stuck somewhere. But somewhere, they'll take me somewhere. But what I'm recognizing, I got to give God some praise. And say, I've been here long enough. It's time for me. To come up to Marvin Clay. It's time for me to pick my feet up. It's time I make the right decision. It's time I hang around the right folks. It's time I keep my mouth over other people. It's time to let the backbiting go. It's time to stop talking about the bishop. It's time. 
He said, you said nothing wrong with you that you don't need to be in. I said, exactly. That's what I said. <laughs> Amen. I remind you, I was a backslid preacher. Right. Turned my back on God. Yeah. But they didn't wait. Yeah. Oh, somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. But anyway, when I got there, when they got there, he said, Mr. Spencer, I want you to roll up your shirts for me. And at this time, I had abscesses on my arm the size of a 50 cent piece that was running with infection. And he asked the two, the other five, he said, now go up your sleeve. He said, do your arm look like they are? And I said, no, it don't. And he asked them, he said, have y'all ever shot those? They said, no, we have not. And then he said, he asked them, have you ever drink methadone? I said, no. He asked them a few questions. And then he looked at me and he said, they are legally insane. <laughs> and he said, and you said that you are all right. <laughs> Shout out to you over here. <laughs> he said, something is wrong with what you said and what we're looking at. And today, I can be crazy when I want to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe all of us is just a pill away. We just a pill away. Just like some of us got one foot on earth and the other one in the ground. Try to balance out to see which one's going to win. Sin don't never win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The greatest thing that sin ever did for me was to introduce me to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to say, let me tell you something. All sin was not bad. Because if it was that bad, I wouldn't stay as long as I did. Yes, I enjoyed the whole lot of it. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me, I don't want to go back. I'd rather go to hell and not go But I know if I wait longer, In the shadow of death, I know for a fact that God will lie me down, raise me up, somebody, somebody give me a prayer. I'm not stuck. You gotta claim it. You gotta preach. You gotta speak prophetically. You don't have to wait on no, no prophet. This is the prophet right here. When the word of God said, they didn't wait. That means if you wait, he's coming. Don't be in no rush. If you wait, he's coming. Oh, God, thank you. But they wait upon the Lord. Shall renew your strength. The old stuff ain't working no more. It don't work. God, let me tell you something. God is doing some things that I didn't ask him to do. God is allowing things to happen that I didn't want him to have that I had to do it. God showed me some people that's connected to my enemy that I have to stay a distance. Because everybody's talking. Everybody's talking. And some people are holding some people back because they don't want them to tell what they're going to say. Say, stay friends because they don't want to be exposed. But I already know who you are. And I already know what you can see. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh God. I know I'm going to get in trouble for that. And, and I'm not preaching to no one person. I'm just preaching that that's all right. I'm just speaking in general. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because it amazes me that when I'm affected, it's all right to be affected. Somebody shout okay. It's all right. But when it comes to you, you don't like it. It's all right for me to be attacked. But when it comes to you, you don't like it. 
when it comes to me, everybody got something to talk about. But when it comes to you, we, we can't deal with that. Can't deal with that. Running never gets you nothing. It's going to get you nowhere. Hallelujah. Uh, and the Bible says, weeping and criticizing God. Uh, why don't you look around and find out what the lesson is? We, we too busy. Well, why did this one do this? And why that one do this? Instead of us saying, God, what is the lesson in this message? What is the lesson that you want me to learn in this text? It ain't always about what's going on or what you done did. Sometimes God is trying to iron some stuff out of you. Oh, I remember that when we was covering up his kids and one of the young guys in the neighborhood that all his parents had passed away and my parents would take them in and every morning he would get up and earn his pants without even washing them. He earned so much that they start shining. Hallelujah. And that what I looked at and I thought, I said, they ain't nothing but a whole lot of built up dirt. He's stuck in the pain. And we got a whole lot of built in mess that is in the that will stop. And that we can't think no other way but the way we will talk to think. But I got to think like God. I got to see me as God see me. Not like you see me. Because you'll never see me the way God sees me. Oh, child, hallelujah up in here. And you're supposed to be a man of God. Yes, I am. And always will be. Right. Always will be. You don't let nobody step you down. Because of what they know about you. Ain't no secret about my life. You can't tell the story no way, so keep your mouth shut. Y'all gotta learn how to shut folks up. They're trying to tell your story, they don't even know it. They wasn't even there. I heard, that's what's wrong. You heard everybody except for God. <laughs> when God speaks, you it amazes me. When God speaks to you, you can't hear it. <laughs> but when I speak, you hear it. Thank God. I don't know nothing else. There's only two things I know. Street and church. <laughs> yeah. I refuse to go back to the street. The streets weren't good to me. Not at all. Not at all. Survival of the fittest. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens? We get stuck by what other people say about us. Yeah. Yeah. We get stuck by what they say, what they do, and what they think about you. But you never want to ask God, how do you see me? Ah. But I'm so glad that Marcus Sapp made the record. And he said that you saw the best in me with everybody else. Saw the worst. Hey. Saw the worst. Hey. But now, even when God gets you on stuff, and he raised you up, and you allow the demons that go to church, let me tell you, the devil goes to church, and the devil goes to church to collect information, to circulate it outside. But let me tell you one thing, the curse that was on this church no longer exists. It's been broken. And God has given greatest not only the church, but I. I had to. I had to. I had to take my family before God. Because everybody in my family has started dying. I had two sisters. I had a sister and a brother died the same day. Four hours apart, younger than me. Then I had another sister to die. Then my daddy died. Then my grandmother died. Then my oldest sister died while I was in the hospital. I say, Lord, on. Something is not right here. And I find out that a man, a bishop called me. He said, you better break the curse. The curse that's on your family that's following you to the church. And that's why every Sunday we've been reading, breaking the curse. Hallelujah. Not only 
go my family. But when you speak it out of your mouth, you're breaking the curse on your own family. Now God saying, get it together up in here, new life. He said, because I'm doing a new thing. The former thing that passed away, don't go back and reach for nothing. That I allowed to walk up out of here. Because I can't sin. The new is even mixing with the old. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had, let me tell you something. I had a conversation. Oh God. With Deacon Chambers. One of what's his name? Gun Staples people. And I was telling him, I said, look, I want to have a meeting with your bishop. And he said, you know what? A lot of us know about you already. Hallelujah. Is there? He would love to talk to you. Shout hallelujah up in here. One monkey don't stop no show. And I told him, let me tell you something. And I said to myself, but what is the lesson in it? He said, because where you was at before, or somebody shouted, y'all, 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 y
See, these are big shots. I'm not, I, I don't want to go in the back because they're big shots. That, that's, that's not it. It's what they have done in the community is what impressed me. Amen. Yeah, I, I know he, I know, you know, you got some money. Yeah, if he could offer me some money, I ain't gonna say it with future. <laughs> I would rather for somebody to show me how to get the money so I can keep getting it. Not just bless me one time. Oh, somebody shall find you just one time. Because of what we 
empty. Oh, somebody shout and say, thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he waited and there came a time that he was wondering, shall I do this or not? Well, let thy will, but let thy will be done. And the will of God, for the Bible said, in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. And how do you think that you are so special that God only loved you? When the Bible said that God so loved the world that he didn't give Jesus just for Bishop to come up the crack house, but he gave salvation to every soul that confessed with his mouth. Somebody shout, hallelujah, and they that believe it within their heart. When you have a heart, when you have a heart for God, it's not just a mouth confession. It's repentant time. Turn it around and make that thing right. Shout hallelujah. It's more than a confession. I need to hear every day of my life. But sometimes I don't know if I want to cuss or I want to pray. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church people. Church people, make you more cuss. I'm sorry, y'all, but y'all keep me in prayer. <laughs> keep me in prayer. Hallelujah. When I cuss, I don't slip off. I just curse. And all that dressing it up. You can't get the living dressing up stuff. <laughs> I just curse Lord and live with me. When I cover it up, I ain't really ready. Isaiah 28 had thou known. Had thou not heard that he is the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the earth. Faith is not. So don't no faith with you. Why, why are we faint? <laughs> you know what gets me, y'all church folks? You see somebody somewhere taking a drink. And you swear they're going to hell. <laughs> I wish I could say this thing like I really wanted to say it. What about some of the stuff you do at home behind closed doors? <laughs> You talk about everybody, but you don't talk about what you do at home. Yeah, that's just hope it And the Bible never told nobody they couldn't take a drink. Said, be not drunk or strong drunk. All right. See, we don't we, we only teach what we want to teach, but we we don't want to teach the whole Bible. We don't want to teach that. We don't want to teach that everything is lawful. But some things are expedient. There's some things that you have a conviction of because you got a conviction I do and you're going to say, well, you know, no, that's your conviction. I haven't got convicted yet. Leave me alone. All things are lawful. First Corinthians 6 chapter. Expedient means that you should not mess with like me. Okay, I'm talking about me. Expedient means that I should not be hanging around dope fingers. But one day, they'll give me back. I will not take a drink. One is too many, a thousand is enough. I'm not a one shot glass man. And I'm not a half pint man. All right? I come to your house at the party, I start off with the top shelf, and when that's gone, I go to the bottom shelf. <laughs> In other words, and, and the thing about it is, most of the time when, when we went to those kind of parties, we didn't have no money, no way, we were going to ask what you served. 
All hands to God. What y'all got left? Some bar? Okay, let me get that. <laughs> that I cannot do. Because I cannot take one drink and be sensible. Because I have a lot of activities in my hand. Well, what do you mean, Bishop? Well, if we had disco and I'm drinking, one drink, half a drink, another drink, takes me, and you get up and go dance. I go to your table, take all your liquor off the table, put it in my bag. <laughs> 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 and then I want to dance with your girlfriend. So I got it. <laughs> These are the things that gets me in trouble. That's what expedience means. That anytime it takes you out of your character, you don't need to mess with it. God did not create everything in this world just for sinners to enjoy. The church has messed you up. Son Corinthians says this that a man has to do the things of the world to please his wife. He didn't say the church. A woman has to do the things of the world to please her husband. When I was coming up, they used to tell you, they used to tell us that when you get married, after you get married, you don't turn the lights off. You know, turn the lights off. <laughs> I want to see what I got. <laughs> <laughs> they told us when we were coming up, and you know, this is how I'm stalking. They said that certain things, that you, certain ways that you shouldn't be with your life. When the bed, when the Bible said, Marriage is honorable before God. The bed is undivided. My God. So whatever me and my wife are preaching is okay. <laughs> We're stuck. We're stuck in a teaching that we have not went back and investigated. And if I did fall short, who are you to send me to hell? I'm living in hell right now. I ain't got to wait to die to go to hell. I ain't got to wait to heaven. I ain't got to wait to go to heaven to get what I have here on earth. Amen. Amen. Why can't I walk the street of gold on earth? When scripture says on earth as it is in heaven. Give me all the good stuff right now. Because, let me tell you something. I ain't going to see it when I'm gone. And it's not going to be behind on hers. My wife and whoever else is going to enjoy proud of her new man. <laughs> and I will wake up. <laughs> take my shoes off. <laughs> we're stuck, we're stuck in a time. Well, 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 let me tell you something. Church is not to live in. We come here and learn how to live and go back outside and tell somebody else about the goodness of Jesus. You can't even get folks to do Folks are so messed up in their own self, they can't even, they can't even witness to nobody. In Acts 1 8, it said, after, don't worry about who's coming. After you receive the Holy Ghost, you ought to be a witness unto me, into Judea, Jerusalem, and the uttermost parts of the world. We get the Holy Ghost and we sit in here and spit on each other all day long. We go outside and witness to nobody. <laughs> Holy Ghost teaches us how to love somebody when they messed up. That's right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because you weren't so great before. When a whole lot of us been somebody big, we weren't supposed to be here. But guess what? God forgave you. But since you hear about somebody else in the church, you go to hell. You're going to hell because you don't have no right to send nobody there. You're supposed to go get them out of hell. That's my job. 
For everyone you said, I'm going to get them. Y'all don't believe that. Read your Bible, you find out that Jesus went and got some free some too. Yeah. I am so glad that I am who I am. I am. When I learned how to accept me for me, I got free. Yeah. One time she said, Bishop was up. Yeah, you're right. Sure was. Mm -hmm. I didn't lie about it. I said, sure was. Mm -hmm. Sure was. While the other ones were sitting up there hiding, but the ones that talked about me was the ones that taught me how to be one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. It's one thing to be a hole in the world. It's another, it's another way to be a hole in the church. And there's some people in church that I go to and they say, no, don't, don't, don't mention that. <laughs> don't mention that. I don't know. <laughs> we were, I was preaching in the church. Uh, it was this uh, guy, he was, a, he, was, he was from the other way, from the other church. So he went with me. <laughs> I started talking about how when I was a drug high, I would get a man and do what I had to do to him and give me some money. And he was sitting in the chair like this. He kept looking at me and like, like he was like, man, please don't mention my name. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get stuck there. And some of y'all may not understand it, but there are certain things that addiction will make you do. Yes, It'll make you do it, and, and other people don't understand. No. Let me tell you something. This is my wife. And she know I won't do that. Hey, man, she tell you. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's wrong with that. Y'all don't talk about it in church. Why not? Don't talk about it. Now, if, I, if, if, if I don't be a witness to another man, how good another man can be to his wife, one of them is going to find somewhere else to go to. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got somebody to talk back to me. <laughs> somebody to talk back. <laughs> see, see, the, the, the screaming and the howling and all the dynamics, all that, that's over with. Now we're going to talk. <laughs> this is impartation. Yeah. Right. But if you wait, you know, you, know, you, know what, you know what's good about waiting? When you wait for the Lord, you even get the you even get to get the right wife or the right husband. And because you have the right wife and the right husband, doesn't mean your marriage is not going to go through anything. And because you're going through something, doesn't mean for you to run away from it. Because the Bible says for better or worse. So what is the worst of it? I wish I had a long that in the last past three. <laughs> Church, you know why? So you know why divorce rate is so high in church? Because we don't teach it. All we want is a hundred dollar line, and a thousand dollars. And then let me tell you something: the line wonders. They take your money and they forget about you when they go home. They don't pray for you. Then they lie and tell you the Lord said this. If a prophet do not have the gift of interpretation, he should not speak in tongues That's right. 15 minutes before he gave the prophecy. Mm -hmm. I have never seen the Old Testament where the prophet spoke in tongues and then spoke to the people. You must have the gift of interpretation. If you can't interpret your own tongue, how are you going to interpret what God is saying to somebody else? That's not all.
but we love it. Yeah. We love it. We, we yeah. hate you that. We, uh, such and such going to be that free gospel. Oh, free gospel. Yeah. And all you got to do is read out one, one person's social security number. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they got a new thing. They got a new thing. We had a prophet come in here, and I didn't know he went on Facebook and, and, and heard a couple testimonies, and he came in. And then after he left, this dude was not bishop. Don't you know that he got that off of Facebook? Facebook. I said, <laughs> <laughs> no. Let me help you out. You got it off. That's going to look at Facebook. Yeah. Instead of having the earpiece, right. they learn about you on Facebook right. through your services. Right. And they'll come in and they'll start prophesying. Yeah. And tell you your name. Uh -huh. So next time it happened, they tell me that somebody was said, "What's my social security number?" Amen. Hallelujah. You must have the spirit to know of it. You got some shysters out here. Know how gullible church folks really are. They will give to a prophet from California and know they were in the short in their own church and won't even get it. That's right. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. As soon as you go to the hospital, who they call? Uh -huh. No, call that prophet. You just gave him money. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get mad. Then they say, well, I thought you, what kind of man of God are you? I'm the man of God that God called. <laughs> that is obedient. <laughs> Amen. And I don't have to be at the hospital to pray for you. I'll send you one. I'll send you a prayer. Amen. Yes, it works. Prayer can go where you can't go. Ain't that right, Flo? That's right. She's a witness. She, she, had, she had the presence of God. We, 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 we're stuck so many ways that we don't know how to get out. I got kicked out. You see, God allows the situations that happen in my life to kick me out of being stuck. Because sometimes we can get stuck with people and can't believe that some of the stuff people will do and say to you. And when God, when God, when God reveals it to you, it kicks you out. And you say, I won't allow that to happen no more. I won't allow certain people to come to us. That's why, Pastor, that we must have ministers around us that know how to handle certain situations so we won't have to take that advice. Absolutely. And I blame myself. But I know from the day that I cannot give myself like that. Because people expect too much. One of my pops is so good. Stop. He said, stop running to the hospital every time someone go. I said, what are you talking about? That's my job. He said, I know it's your job. He said, well, what's going to happen? One day they're going to call you. The prayer is not going to turn out the way it's always been turned out. And they're going to blame you for the death of that person. Because they think you're God. Saints, I'm not God. Don't never look at me as God. Because when you do, God has a way of bringing me, allowing me to fall, to show you that I'm just like everybody else. I'm tired of going, getting stuck. I don't want to be stuck anymore. Amen. 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 You ain't got to call me bishop. You can call me by my first name. I'm still going to answer you. Because ain't nothing that's important to me. What's important to me is the kingdom of God. The work, not my title. My title is not important to the kingdom. It's the work that's getting done for the kingdom is what's important.
and you're part of that. Then you give God some praise. He ain't finished it. So come a time with it. This is all you're going to do. You ain't going to have to work for them other places. This is all you're going to do. And you're just not going to be doing it for this church. Isaiah Thomas don't work no way. And his dad was my godfather before he died. He don't work no way but play keyboards, direct quiets. And he got everything he wants. God did it for him to do it for you. Amen. Anything you want, God has. It. Trust in the Lord and do good. He will give you desires. Trust God and do good. Don't expect the desires of your heart and you ain't doing no good. Do good. God will bless you. Yeah, just God, God will blow your mind. You know, blew my mind so many times. And I'd be like, Lord, what, what, what you waiting on that? <laughs> Amen. But he has us to wait on the Lord. Wait, he said. And the Lord shall leave us. That's your mouth, wings like an eagle. I guess an eagle. Waiting, watch this. The eagle, when it's raining, the eagle or the clouds come out, the eagle go high in altitude. And he doesn't come down into the cloud. He doesn't run away from it. So your praise and your worship have to set you up in altitude. And what's going on in your life have to be under it. And when it's dissolved, then you go back to regular altitude. And see, the thing about eagles, they don't do that either. They do their thing in the air. <laughs> they do their thing in the air. After, after, after the storm is over, they say, all right, let's get it on. They be like, Mom, man, I've been really trying, baby. <laughs> you, you can't imagine you can say, I've really been holding back for a long time. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah, man. Is that it? <laughs> Is there anybody here that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ in your part in your part of your sins? If you're saved, if you're not saved, come on. Come. If you need prayer, come. if you don't want nobody praying for you, you're not mad. You, it's all to hear from you. Because I believe sometimes that God is not waiting for another person to intercede for you. When you can go before God yourself and you have the opportunity to do this. Yes, you can. All you that are heavy and heavy, come unto me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.